Hey everybody, it's Dr. Levitt here. I am at my office and I just had the honor and the privilege, I would say, to take care of a person, a real record-setting patient. I saw an individual recently who had a hemoglobin A1C level of 18%. Now, if that means anything to you, if you've ever had your own hemoglobin A1C checked, you will know that that is a shockingly high number. Normal hemoglobin A1Cs are less than 6%. 6.5 equals diabetes. And I was taught in school that numbers above 15% were barely compatible with life. So to see an individual with an 18% was just shocking. And I, uh, I queried a bunch of my colleagues. None of them had ever seen a hemoglobin A1C that high. So how did this happen? I want to talk about diabetes a little bit, and I want to talk about A1C and how misunderstood of a lab test it actually is. First, a little bit on my patient. So this individual was a type 2 diabetic, fairly recently diagnosed. He became extremely thirsty several months ago, which is a common symptom of diabetes. He didn't know what was going on, and so he tried to quench his thirst with large volumes of juice, fruit juice, soda, and other sugary beverages, and that just pushed his sugar higher and higher and higher. So his blood glucose got shockingly high, and that was the result uh, of this excessive sugar consumption. Now, what happens when a diabetic or any person consumes large amounts of sugar is that the blood sugar, the glucose level, begins to rise. Now, that's the number that we look at on blood tests, and when diabetics prick their finger and check it with a little glucose monitor, they're looking at their serum glucose level. Now, that's a very different number that tells you exactly what your sugar is at that moment in time. The hemoglobin A1C is something longer term. It gives you a window into about three months of blood sugar control, and that's the way most people understand it. But I want you to understand it a little bit more deeply, and this is the way I explained it to my patient and the way I explained it to all my diabetic patients. Hemoglobin A1C is caused by a reaction that all of us are very familiar with, and it's called caramelization. Caramelization is the reaction that causes onions to get that gooey, sweet, and delicious flavor. Um, it's also the Maillard reaction, the browning reaction, which causes the top of a cake or a cut cupcake to brown or crust over. It's caused when sugar, glucose, uh, and proteins or sequences of amino acids link together. Uh, it happens under the conditions of heat uh, and oxygen in cooking, and that's what the, the caramelization reaction is about. And it can also happen in your body when your blood sugar is high. So when blood sugars elevate, that glucose in the blood can link to proteins in our bodies. And there's a couple of famous proteins that this is, are particularly vulnerable to this effect. There's proteins in the back of the eye on the retina, um, in the heart, in the kidneys, in the nerve endings, in small blood vessels. All these areas are very vulnerable to caramelization, and that's why those are the areas that are so vulnerable to diabetic complications. You've heard about diabetes causing blindness, heart disease, kidney failure, neuropathy. All of those problems are the result of blood sugar binding to tissue proteins and gumming up the works, caramelizing the flesh, quite literally. Now, if we wanted to have a laboratory test that measured how caramelized a person is, I suppose we could we could take a chunk of their flesh out, right? A chunk of their kidney, as barbaric as that might be, and, and we could test it to see how much sugar is attached to it. Now, that would be a barbaric test and we would never do that, but it turns out that there's a protein circulating around in your blood. It's called hemoglobin. You've heard of it before. And it's an oxygen-carrying molecule. It's plenty of it in the blood. And it's a protein as well that also gets caramelized. So we use the hemoglobin, run it through sophisticated equipment, and see how much sugar is attached to it. And when we see that, because of the fact that hemoglobin lives in circulation for about three to four months, we can see how much sugar is attached to the hemoglobin at any given time, and that gives us a window about how good that person's blood sugar control has been over about a three-month window. And the number is expressed very differently than any other laboratory test you see. Most things are measured in, in units like milligrams per deciliter or grams per liter, these sorts of things. But hemoglobin A1C is a percentage. It's measured in percent, and what it tells us is that X percent, in my, in my patient's case, 18% of his hemoglobin had a sugar molecule attached to it. Now that's a very high number. A normal number would be closer to 5%. So 
When you check a hemoglobin A1C, you're checking how many of your hemoglobin molecules per 100 have a glucose molecule attached to it, and you want that number to be below 6. Above 6.5 is considered diabetes these days. Uh, and like I say, this gentleman had a hemoglobin A1C of over 18. So I hope that that helps you. I hope that that gives you some insight into how to eat with a lower carbohydrate density to keep your blood, blood sugar lower and to correspondingly keep your tissues from caramelizing. That is not something that you want to have happen. So I hope that helps you. Be well.